Boy howdy, does the railroad get hate from Fallout 4 players or what? In all fairness, each of the major factions in Fallout 4 could have done with a little more time in the incubator, but the railroad gets a lot of hate due to the simple fact that many players don't view them as an actual faction, and rather just see them as a minor collection of influential figures in the Commonwealth. As much fun as it is to scroll through page upon page of comments, forum threads, and YouTube videos complaining about the railroad, we instead thought it might be a little more entertaining to actually take a few minutes to explore options that Bethesda could have taken to add just a little more context and make the railroad an enjoyable faction to side with, rather than just another anti-institute option. So pop a top on your favorite flavor of Vim and come in out of the fog, because I'm Grey, you're watching Grey Gaming, and today we're going to take a look at 5 easy things Bethesda probably should have done to make the railroad a little better in Fallout 4. People whine about Preston Garvey and all his settlements that need our help, but the Minutemen ain't got nothing on the railroad when it comes to Radiant Quests. Just to name some off the top of our heads, we've got Tinker Tom's Mila Quest, we've got Pam's DIA caches in Courser Hunting, Mercer Safe House, Randolph Safe House to the mattresses. It's just so... The sad thing is, is that these quests eventually do serve an actual narrative purpose, but getting to the point where you actually see the big picture is boring, monotonous, and just all around unsatisfying. To make matters worse, most of these radiants aren't contiguous, meaning you don't just get to finish one stage and instantly accept the next stage. No, that would be too easy. Instead, you have to do one of these radiant quests, then do a completely different radiant from a different chain, then come back and get the next stage to the one you actually want to focus on. If you ask me, this is way worse than Preston slapping you with radiance every time you make the mistake of going AFK while he's patrolling Sanctuary nearby. There actually is a decent way to make these radiants work with the railroad. First of all, having to do someone else's grunt work before you get to the next stage of your current set of grunt work is just BS and sort of goes against the whole separations of duty and data compartmentalization stuff that you know is a matter of life and death for the railroad. Second, having to set 10 milas out of 13 possible random locations is just it's way too much, especially when your reward is a pretty meh hunting rifle. Instead, this could have been replaced with a simple three-stage quest. First, you get one Mila and get sent to one random location under the pretense that there are nine other operatives placing their Milas at the same time to complete the net. Then when you return, Tom says one of the operatives failed to check in, so you're sent with Glory to investigate, and while clearing the location of hostiles, discover the missing agent's body, with Mila still in one piece. Now it's up to you and Glory to finish finish that agent's mission. Once you two finish and return to base, Tom lets you know that one of the Milas was damaged and is providing limited data due to limited transmission range. So you're now tasked with setting up one more Mila to serve as a relay. Bing bang bomb, you have a happy Tinker Tom. Mercer Safe House, let's face it, sucks for one simple reason. Its location is random. It never seems to fail that Mercer gets assigned to a settlement that I've been developing for the Minutemen, only to now have the railroad squatting in the back 40. This could all be solved by having Dez ask for your input allowing you to select the actual location to place Mercer Safe House. Just these simple changes to the railroad's radiant system would go a long way toward getting rid of that feeling that you're just an unpaid intern doing busy work and fetching Carrington's coffee while he talks shit about you to your face. A lot of players tend to miss this, but while poking around the Institute, it's possible to find a list of informants that the Institute keeps on the surface who report to the SRB. Wouldn't you know it, every single caravanner in Bunker Hill is on that list. Just think about that for a second. The railroad's most important asset on the surface is Old Man Stockton, and every single one of Stockton's employees works for the SRB. Can you say missed opportunity? There is so much room for double dealing, counterintelligence, etc. Why was none of this taken? Think about it. Given your access to the Institute, you could procure a coarser uniform and pose as an Institute coarser, giving false directives to informants or intercepting their intel before it can find its way back to the SRB. You could convince some to stop providing intel to the Institute, whether by ensuring their family's safety, bribery, or some other means. Maybe even have it come to light that one of them just discovered Stockton's importance to the railroad and you have to permanently silence them before they can blow his cover. I would especially go for this option if the traitor in question is Doc Weathers. Wise ass. It's just sad that the devs and story writers set the stage for such a complex and compelling chapter in the railroad's main story and completely squandered it. When you first find the railroad, there is a single heavy named Glory. As you work your way through much of the railroad storyline, Glory is the only heavy we ever see. 
Mercer, Randolph, Ticonderoga, none of the safe houses are home to a single heavy. At least none that we meet anyway. Then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the railroad musters dozens of them for the battles of Bunker Hill and the assault on the Institute. And once everything is said and done, every pre-war military checkpoint in the Commonwealth is now guarded by three to five of the bastards. Where in Holy Adam's name did all of these heavies come from? And how were they trained when Glory is the only one we ever interact with prior to the final act of the storyline, and by the end of the story, she's dead. You see, the railroad falls victim to what I like to call plot hole for the sake of plot progression syndrome, a uh, patent pending. It's the same inexplicable logic in Mass Effect that praises Cerberus for manufacturing a single frigate in secret in just two years, then less than a year later they have an entire fleet of cruisers and dreadnoughts just so that they can appear to be more of a threat. It doesn't really hold up. Yes, the railroad definitely needs to pose a threat of force serious enough that any of the other factions would think twice before picking a fight, but just pulling a secret army of gauze rifle packing combat specialists out of nowhere is just lazy. A great opportunity was missed whereby Glory Glory and the sole survivor finished their accidental dual booking mission in Medford, and Glory, acknowledging the sole survivor's skills, asks for their assistance as she tries to build a new heavy core. The sole survivor could help her recruit, locate caches of gauze rifles the smuggling holds on crashed airliners comes to mind, maybe even come up with a training curriculum, maybe even snatch a copy of the Courser training manual while you still have access to the Institute so that railroad heavies can train and determine counters to Courser strategy and tactics. All of this would go a long way toward explaining the sudden proliferation of heavy agents during the later stages of the railroad storyline. When you first find the railroad, they're in a bit of a bind. Their cover was blown and their headquarters in a secret US government facility has been wiped out and occupied by synths. Now what's left of the railroad HQ is hiding out in a mausoleum and treating any calls for help from their remaining cells as possible institute trickery. You would think that this would prompt a bit of a wake-up call, that they need to work on improving their ability to communicate and increase security in the process, but nope, their idea of stealth is freshly chalked out sets of symbols on old surfaces as if a courser wouldn't spot that from miles away. I know they're trying to work with limited tech, but plain text messages left in dead drops that are clearly marked is about the stupidest thing you could do given the fact that you're on the back foot. Any first semester cybersecurity student knows what war chalking is. Heck, just about any computer-related degree seeker would probably know. So why wouldn't the Institute, an organization where all of its members are descended from students and faculty at a freaking technical college, not be able to spot and recognize that? What the real Railroad needs is rapid, secure communications. There could have been a quest where the railroad needs to take over a radio station. WRVR, Outpost Amonja, Gunner Plaza are all good candidates. By doing this, they gain the ability to broadcast to the Commonwealth. A second stage of this quest could see you asking to make copies of Kent's Silver Shroud and Daring Dashwood tapes so that they can be broadcast across the Commonwealth. Of course, the true goal would be for Tinker Tom to perform a bit of steganography, or in layman's terms, hiding secret messages inside the recordings which would themselves be encrypted. Each agent, along with a codename, would be assigned a time slot and decrypt key specific to that agent so that if they are compromised you can just bump their assignment from the time slot. The dead drops could still be used for communication back to their cells as a form of check-in to request a fresh key or a new time slot, and instead of using rail signs to mark locations, maybe switch to something that would be a little easier to blend into the background. An example would be using a certain radioactive isotope, one that's relatively harmless, that still registers registers on a Geiger counter, but would do so in a very specific way. Heck, potassium salt registers on a Geiger counter, so it's not like this would require a significant level of technological development from the railroad. This would go a long way toward improving operational security as well as adding a little realism and making it seem like the railroad isn't just repeating all the same old mistakes that led them to their current dire straits. If you've enjoyed the video up to this point, it would mean a lot if you would consider liking the video. Audience engagement is a metric we use to help determine what sort of content provides the most value to you, dear viewer. Please, thank you, and now on to number five. This is the part of the whole railroad story that makes no sense at all. Sure, I can get that Maxon left them no alternative but to blow up the Predwin, but what on earth could the railroad hope to gain from destroying the Institute? First and foremost, it's never really explained whether synths are sterile or whether they are capable of having children, with other synths or with humans. So as far as we know, the only way for synths to procreate is the robotics lab in the Institute. The railroad believes that synths are sentient beings, privy to the same human rights you would expect for yourself, and 
their solution to guarantee their freedom is basically the equivalent of forcefully sterilizing their entire population. Yeah, that tracks. Throughout the nuclear option quest, the railroad seizes control of the Institute's molecular relay, their alarm system, their station-wide intercom system, and plants an explosive device on the main reactor. And at this point, when the Institute is completely at their mercy, nobody thinks this might be a good time to stop the bloodshed and call a truce to negotiate a favorable peace. At this point, the Institute, a bunch of scientists, not military zealots, would likely be willing to agree to just about anything if it means the people holding them at gunpoint will back down. Disbanding the SRB and replacing security with railroad heavies? Completely reasonable. Allowing synths basic human rights? Sure, that part of Institute society doesn't make much logical sense anyway, but we'll save that for our five ways to improve the Institute video. Requiring a railroad and synth representative on the board of directors? They won't be happy about it, but what's the alternative? Recalling all synths on the surface who have been impersonating humans? Yup. Maybe so it's not just an all sunshine and roses ending, throw in a requirement that synth production must be slowed to a rate commensurate with human reproduction to avoid them multiplying out of control. The synths would probably be willing to accept this compromise given they've just been freed and the SRB is gonzi. Maybe if a negotiated peace sounds a bit anticlimactic, you could have acting miserable pissant Justin Ao defy the conventions and try and destroy the robotics lab. Maybe you're forced to choose between saving the synth lab or chasing down Ao before he can escape escape to the surface with a group of loyal coursers. You know, give a little bit of consequence to player actions. Todd. Simply put, the railroad just being a slightly different flavor of the blow up the institute quest holds no water and is completely and utterly uninteresting. All in all, these fixes aren't nearly as easy to implement as our five easy ways to fix the Minutemen, as they would require significant quest design, voice acting, and most importantly, time. But I have to say, as someone whose current railroad playthrough is sitting at 550 hours as of writing this script, that the railroad in pretty much its entirety is the least fun faction to play and the climax is least in line with their whole mission vision thing. Depending on where you land on the whole our synth people debate, they may be the most morally good faction there is, but you're kind of getting saddled with a lot of negativity by siding with your convictions and in a not very necessary or thematically interesting way. Anyway, I'd like to hear what you all think about this. Would any of these changes sway your decision to side with a different faction? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, it's been real and we hope to see you here next time on Great gaming.